lively energy today. It's great. It's awesome. We'll ride that wave. So, uh, comfortable seated position, nice and tall in the spine. Sitting tall can be very relaxed. It doesn't have to be muscle-based. Uh, so while we do like that straight spine, you don't have to be squeezing your back or anything. Just let your shoulders drop, stack your spine. It's a blissful sensation when you strike just the right middle ground where everything's just balanced on your spine. Imagine each vertebrae just perfectly stacked on the one below it until you get to your head, which rests nice and soft at the top. With maybe a little subtle, subtle reach of the crown upward. Turn into a slight drop of the chin. It's like you're wanting to plug into the sky through the crown of your head. And then the breath, when the breath comes in now, just kind of spills downward into your lungs and into your belly. It provides that wonderful caress, that inner caress of breath, which deserves a little time just to enjoy that and feel that. It strikes me that our, our days are filled with so much forward movement that we get so horizontally oriented. We're always moving forward, coming from somewhere, going somewhere. There's a lot of horizontal motion. Driving our cars, walking. So this moment represents the cessation of that forward movement. And then the, the, the sensation of the vertical, that's what this is all about right now. Just stopping, dropping some roots, feeling the spaciousness of the sky. The up and down flow of the breath. If every cell in your body is like a mini ocean, the choppy waters are coming to a nice blissful stillness. It's so still that it reflects like a mirror. Taking it one step further, that exhale is so powerful in its gentleness and in its subtlety. It's very, very effective. And one of the main things we're doing here today, which is releasing stress, tension. It's funny that we can actually, you know, go through all these poses and get a, a, a nice massage on the body, but we can do that without ever really relaxing internally. So that's what this is all about right now, is that deep relax on an internal level via the exhale especially. So when you inhale, feel yourself come to fullness. And with the exhale, really try to <sighs> cultivate the sigh sensation on that exhale, whether or not it makes the sigh sound. And it can. <sighs> you want it to have the sigh feeling. The sigh feeling is the indication that it's working, that you are releasing on that deeper level. <sighs> it's the, the silent... Ah, of release and releasing. And now imagine hundreds of those by the time we're done. Now keep that going. We're going to just do a nice gentle touch on the, on the spine, the spinal cord and the energetics that accompany it. We're going to just turn to the left ever so slightly, even the littlest bit. Your left shoulder is going backwards, your right shoulder is coming forward. And for this particular twist, you want to keep it very unstretchy, just very soft, soft pressure. So by turning and trying to keep that turn even from bottom to top of the spine, you get a little turn in the head. It's like you want to zero in on the spinal cord itself. If it gets too stretchy, it becomes about the muscles and the tissues and the bones around the spinal cord. But if you keep it subtle, it's like you can address the spinal cord itself and then breathe now. You're caressing the nervous system into a calm, peaceful state with your breath. And now the left knee, perfect placement for your right hand, left hand on the floor. 
floor just behind you. If you want to add a little bit more squeeze now for the final breaths of this, now it gets a little bit more muscly, if you will, more tissue-y in the stretch. Okay, give it a nice ringing out. Pulling on the knee, gently pushing on the floor, keeping the spine nice and straight. One more big inhale. And ride the exhale to and through the center. And starting off on the right side with the same spirit of soft and gentle. So in other words, no push or pull to start. Just peering inward. Now, wherever sensations happen, or do they happen in the brain? Do they happen in the body? Is it both? Well, we do know that the nervous system is a communication lines, if you will, of every sensation you will ever feel. And the spinal cord is the main river of that, the main vein. So that's what we're zeroing in right now on. Now give it a little extra squeeze, a little extra pull, actually get the muscle and tissues. Exhale back to the center. Recline back onto the support of the hands just enough so that we can very slowly and carefully, like it's the first time we're ever doing this, extend the legs out in front of us. Slide them out slowly. And let that be a whole pose in itself. Let's feel those legs reach out. Reach through the heels. Reach through the toes. It's like you want to really uh, imbue your legs with awareness before stretching them. So just take a moment to really feel your legs, maybe even close your eyes. You've got to see those legs without your eyes. A couple deep breaths like your lungs are in your legs. And every pose starts as the visual of that pose. So when we say forward fold, we picture ourselves over the legs. But it starts just by sitting up a little bit more, maybe coming off the hands and letting the hands float to the lap or to the floor to the sides of your legs so that they're not driving you too far forward. Now most of us just by sitting up already get a whole thorough pull on the back of the legs. And with the backs of the legs it's very easy to cross that line from a, a nice pleasant stretch into a more of a wincing kind of stretch. I want you to make sure at all costs you do not get into the, the tugging sensation. You want just a nice pressure. Usually what has to let go in that picture is our drive to get further to the toes. Don't worry about reaching the toes. Let that go. And just make it about reaching into the deep tissues. Not only the backs of your legs, but as you allow yourself to round forward, you can get the back too. So this, this is entirely up to you. If you want to just keep it in the legs, stay more straight spine. If you want to include the back, round yourself into it. But again, make sure that the sensation of the stretch is always one you want to stay with rather than one you're anxious to leave. It can be the difference in fractions of a millimeter. Remember that breath is facilitating release of tension. And a very simple technique that you can bring into any pose is purposely to just break the mold, if you will. Breaking the mold means you're kind of allowing yourself to move outside of the, the pose that you have in your mind pose that you're trying to adhere to, purposely break out of that. Bring some sway, bring some tip, bring some tilt. Change it. If the, if the image of the pose is rigid, our body's going to feel that rigidity. we got to just allow occasionally some free movement as a reminder to the body, hey, you're not trapped in this pose. This pose is an offering, not an imposition. just needs a little reassurance sometimes. And then we start to ease away nice and slow. Think of the exit of the pose as the other half of the pose. So you're backing away, so we don't want to rush it. When it ease back, feel that lovely sensation of your tissues easing back to their original elasticity. And as we come back to the hands, give a few moments to just feel the app 
after effects of that. Again, if closing the eyes helps to heighten your awareness of those sensations, by all means, let your eyes close. Yoga is the art of noticing. your seat, let your heels of your hands slide back to about a foot, foot and a half tops behind you. Fingers pointed forward as long as your wrists are okay with that, but angle the hands at a different angle if that feels good. And then for this one, you've got two main options to flatten the feet. First is a, a kind of a lighter way of going into the pose, an easier way to introduce yourself to it. Straight legs, a little more heat. Either way, we want to, without a, a jerky motion, we want to very smoothly float up off the ground. And levitate up. So we're just on the hands and the heels. Now lifting is very different than floating. I want you to think floating as opposed to hauling your weight upward. Instead, float. Bring a softness to your face. Even a soft smile can make the whole body smile. And therefore lighter. Deepen the breath. Breathe into those toes which are reaching into the earth like thirsty roots trying to get to the water. Slide the feet back until they're flat if they haven't already. This is where the next thing to leave the ground is the hands. Again, not in a jerky motion, but smooth. Very smoothly peeling the hands off the ground as you feel the immediate transfer of support into the core, into the tummy area, and just simply float your arms to your sides in a natural way. So you may opt for a more straight angular reach in the traditional boat pose, but give yourself the option, just let the arms be more relaxed and natural at first. I want you to feel your core with all your attention and not your sh shoulders to be a distraction. Now just hold this and feel your breath enveloping it. Make friends with the sensation of a flexing core, and if you crave more, you simply lean back a little bit, recline a few more degrees. Notice how when you do that, the feet naturally kind of get lighter. Maybe they even leave the ground. If you still crave more, you just let the legs keep going as far as straight if you want. So it's more important that you're enjoying than pushing. Stay with it so that you can enjoy the process, breathe, feel it, and not tense up. Let's introduce that breaking the mold technique I mentioned earlier. Just allow yourself to freely move, even if it's just the tiniest bit. To turn left and turn right, or even change the angle of the reach of your arms, or the curvature of your arms, or the bend or straightness of your legs, or the height of your legs. Just play with it now. With your attention mostly on the sensation, the quality of the sensation. Let's keep flowing. And then we give ourselves a little pause in between and just let the feet return to the floor. Let your arms softly wrap the legs. And as your arms take over the supporting roll, your tummy can relax. Be perfectly still if you can, except for the movement of your breath. And imagine that sensation in your belly is like the sound of million singing bowls. You just feel those, those vibrations. We're strengthening our awareness of the sensations in our tummy. That's what we're strengthening. 
and as we leave the arms, the arms float off the legs and we recline back just a little bit. We're reintroducing that strength, that flexion. And again, it's your painting, it's your sculpture, design it how you like. Keep that breath flowing. body is the canvas and the sensations are the paint, the colors. There's no wrong way to paint. This canvas. Good. See some nice creativity here. stronger be fun, pleasurable even. Sometimes I like to answer one pose with a nice opposite. So in this case, we're going to, uh, on coming out of this pose, we're going to cross the ankles and plant the hands in front of us and just step one foot back at a time. Kind of at a plank for just a moment, which keeps the core engaged and includes the chest. Then we let the knees softly meet the ground, point the toes. Then we go from the hands to the elbows, maybe one elbow at a time. And then once we're on the elbows, the final thing to drop is the belly, the upper legs, the pelvis, and the belly all kind of softly go to the floor. Now the same exact areas that we're flexing now are opening, lengthening. So answering the last pose and the sensations that accompanied with it, with its opposite. Feel now as you just rest on your elbows, totally relax. This is definitely not a, a, a muscly kind of pose. Just letting gravity have the weight of your body, letting those breaths flood into the belly. There's a lot of room for your breath now. And keeping nice and still. Just feeling how the sensations slowly shift and change over time, indicating the rearranging and aligning of the tissues. Body intuition, I find, leads me to bring a little subtle sway in the hips, a little side to side rock that helps to go deep into that low spine. If you can picture that low spine, the lumbar, and all those tissues around it, it makes sense that it can get kind of stiff and hardened over time. So just bring a little lazy rock or maybe lift one hip and then lift the other hip. However you want to do that, you can really get into those deep tissues close to that spine, bring some fluidity back. And that goes into the front side of the sacrum. The sacrum is that big bone at the base of the spine, in the middle of the pelvis. And there's tissues and nerves that run in and through and around all of that bone structure. Good. And as though we're going to slowly rebuild the strength, it's like we opened it all up and now we're going to put it all back together now. We're going to slowly pick up the upper legs, pelvis, and lower belly until we're just on the hand, or the elbows rather, and the knees. And everything in between the elbows and knees is just kind of floating. Now in order for that to happen, you can feel how your tummy tightens there, your core engages not just in the front, but in the sides and even the back. So just take a moment to feel that. If it feels pretty easy and you actually want to have more intensity into the pose, you can go from the knees to the toes, and that definitely turns it up a few notches. So elbows and knees, or elbows and toes, keep the breath flowing. We're gonna slowly build the heat from here. Deep breaths, deep breaths remind you to stay relaxed and to enjoy. Good. And then kind of in reverse of what brought us to the elbows, go to your hands, maybe one hand at a time, and turn it into a plank. Good. And 
then start to lift your hips. Start to float higher and higher. Maybe even walk the hands backwards a couple steps or the feet forward a couple steps to shorten the distance between them, turning it into a natural and easy downward dog. And I really, again, want to re-emphasize if the pose in your mind is rigid, it's, your body's going to feel that. That's why we love to open up the playground for downward dog. You're wide open to interpretation and customization. I want you to find a downward dog that works for your body. So however you want to walk your hands forward, back, towards each other, away from each other, and same with the feet. Knees bend, knees straight. You don't know what you like the best until you're going to try it all out. And what you're looking for is the sweet spot, the most restful place where you don't feel like you have to do very much to hang out in downward dog. Keep those breaths slow. And then reverse the motion that got us here. We're going to go floating back towards a plank. But then we're going to keep going. And notice how on a continuum of motion, you can turn a downward dog to a plank to an upward dog as we keep the legs floating above the ground. Now you may be on the bottoms of your toes or you may opt to point the toes back and be on the tops of your feet. Either version of upward dog is suitable, but the idea here is to feel the simultaneous flexion of your tummy, chest, arms, legs supporting you underneath as you get a wonderful back bend. And then let's make our way back again to that downward dog, through that full continuum of motion, through plank, over the toes, hands and feet, and we're back in that downward dog. So that word continuum is extremely important. Yoga is all about, flow is all about staying in that continuum, not dividing the poses, but weaving them together. That's when we really discover the, the flow. In that spirit, let's start to walk the feet forward towards the front of the mat with a big step or several smaller steps again on a continuum of flow. The feet arriving side by side here, we're going to come up about halfway. We're going to feel that low back, mid, and your upper back engage as we draw ourselves up about halfway. And then drop, feel the whole back side open, and hang here for a couple of breaths and a nice lazy hang, letting your knees bend if that helps to relax into it more. Break the mold. And then, before we start to rise up, take a moment to mentally visualize what lies on the other side of that floor picture the center of the earth. This is important to help uh, cultivate a sense of connection with the earth so that when we start to rise up, now catching the next inhale, rising up, letting those arms really reach from the heart on the way up, you're keeping a sense of connection to the earth even as you reach beyond the ceiling into the sky. I mean, we're just going to hang out here nice and long. What a glorious pose this one is. Just enjoying, again, that vertical reach both up and down in that flowing breath in between. Anytime the arms fall, you can send them back even just a little bit for an additional sensation of massage for the arms, chest, and shoulders. Catch the next inhale. Now think continuum. A continuum doesn't start or end. It's just blending. Every pose blends into the next. We're going to exhale, fall. It tends to be the most jerky as we go from exhale to inhale and inhale to exhale. So we're going to really practice inhaling slowly up halfway. And then smoothly from inhale to exhale, planting the hands, stepping back into plank. Take a moment just to catch up with another in-breath. Exhaling, dropping down towards the earth, on or off the knees, and you can stay hovering above the ground for more heat or all the way to the ground for less than curving into a cobra with your full contact on the ground or upward dog. Bottom of the toes or tops of the feet. And then exhale, child's pose to cool down, downward dog to keep it warm. And stay in that continuum. It's all about your attention, always being present.
think about it, everything is waves and everything is rhythms. Sound is waves. Light is waves. Breath is waves. Sensation are waves. It's all waves. So we're just letting our flow be like waves as well to the rhythm of the breath. So if you're in child's pose, exhale wave to downward dog. That exhale wave becomes an inhale wave without, a, again, a jerky division between them. Feet arrive side by side. That inhale peaks as we're about halfway up. The inhale wave smoothly becomes an exhale wave. And so on, inhaling all the way up. Exhaling, arms fall down. So it's about the bliss of continuity, cultivating the flow. Smoother and smoother. Inhale. Here comes exhale. Exhale becomes inhale. Far away up. Inhale becomes exhale. Point in hand, stepping on the back and lowering into the earth. All on that same out breath and then scoop into a cobra or upward dog. Again, if you need to slow it down to keep it smooth, slower than we're going, then slow it down. If you want to speed it up to keep it more smooth, that's okay. So we're not being rigid in the rhythm. Not downward dog or child pose for your next out breath. So you're really on the lookout for jerky motions of any kind. Jerky motions indicate getting ahead of yourself. So if you're on the lookout for that, you can stay on top of it. The flow is relaxed, always. As that old saying goes, nature doesn't hurry, but everything is accomplished. Big step up to the front, or walking. Feet wrapping side by side. The same inhales bringing us halfway up. The exhale, we fall to the fold. The exhale becomes an inhale, we rise on. Big, beautiful, sweet. Arms deep. Exhale. Every movement's got a kind of hallelujah to it. Inhale. or slower than I'm calling out. Inhale, part way up. I'm just trying to hold the middle ground here. If you want to go a little quicker, slow it down. Drop down into the earth. Roll into that upward dog. Retreat back into that child's pose. Downward dog. Just like we're on the lookout for jerkiness, jerkiness in our movements, we're also on the lookout for feelings of restriction or constriction, because that's an indication, again, of missing the point of the pose. The pose should not be a containment. It should be a liberation for the body. Always. So if it starts to feel all rigid or tight or stiff, you can just bring in some fluid motion. It's that easy. Just start to break the mold a little bit. Move, bend your knees, sway. Very simple. Big step for several steps. Bring the feet united at the front of the mat again. Part way up on that same inhale becomes exhale all the way down. The deeper, deeper into the exhale you go, the deeper the following inhale. The deeper that inhale, the more relaxing that exhale. Now let's take a few moments in standing again and just checking with our bodies and our balance at the front-ish of the mat. When we become perfectly still and we stop moving, we can feel the movements that are happening in our bodies. Without us moving, all sensations count. Warmth, breath, pulse, sway. Recalibrated now, we're going to sit into the earth this time. This introduces a little more heat. 
We want your two legs to be like one spring. So you unite the legs as one, feet together, knees together, and sweep the arms up to the sky. Brings in a nice squeeze into the back, too. Then the exhale, the slow straightening of the legs, gliding through the air. You can feel the air passing through your fingers as you fall down again into a fold. Becomes inhale, part way up. Smoothly from inhale to exhale, planting the hands, stepping back up. All of the upper body structures become a bit much. You can skip the dips where we drop down and then crawl into upper dog. So from here on out, just really feel free to, to leave those out as needed. Otherwise, you're going to drop and scoop. And then when we roll back into downward dog, we're going to send one of those feet up towards the front to create a nice lunge. Back heel on or off the floor it makes a big difference. Either spine, catch the next inhale into a nice sweeping wave. This also introduces more heat into the body. And then exhale, hands plant. Skip or dip. Continuum flow, smooth. dog becomes downward dog, the other foot steps up to the front. If it's not exactly matching inhale and exhale, don't worry about it too much. It can still be smooth. Rising up, exhale, hands laying, stepping back. When we talk about rhythm, everything's rhythm, everything's waves. But in music, we've got rock, kind of real straightforward, and then we have swing, which has a little bit more swing to it. Same kind of freedom here in your movements. Doesn't have, you don't have to be doing the same genre of music here. Discover your rhythm. So it's got a little pop and a little swing and a little hop, that's okay. Keep that in mind on the way to the top. If you want to do a hop, feet arriving up to the front. In other words, we can keep it smooth, but some motions may be a little faster than other motions. Some breaths may be a little quicker than other breaths. It's okay. Inhale, sitting into the earth, through the arms into the sky. And exhale. So again, I'm just kind of trying to hold the middle ground and feel free to dance around it. Exhale, it starts to become inhale as we sit into the earth. Palms meet. Exhale, fall into a fold. Inhale, part way up. Becomes exhale, planting the hands, stepping, walking, or hopping back. Skip or dip. Virabhadrasana means warrior. Step one of those feet up to the front of the mat. Catch that next inhale. This is your dance. This is your rhythm. Exhale, slowly coming back down. Hands land. Step, walk, or hop. Skip or dip. Dog becomes downward dog. And through to the other side. Nice. Inhale becomes exhale as we fall back down. And one more time. Skipping the scoop or dipping and scooping. And retreat back to child's pose if you feel your arms need a little rest, a little break, because that can be a lot for the upper body or downward dog. Keep the heat even heel. so much in our culture to, to push, 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 the ability to override the tiredness and keep going. And that's snowball in its own right. And here, it's quite freeing to give yourself that option to rest and take a break and know that that's not you skipping out. That's you taking care of yourself, maintaining that enjoyment factor. It's of utmost importance. Child's pose becomes downward dog. And together, we're going to journey up to the front again with the smoothness. Exhale all the way down. And just as we're completing the sun salute B, it's ushering us into our very first standing pose that we're going to hang out in for a little while. So you're sitting into the earth, legs united as one. That little squeeze between the legs actually, I find, really adds to the, the support underneath you. So bring those little squeeze in between the knees. Let your arms bounce up to the sky. An unbridled, joyous reach first and foremost, and then shaping it from there as you wish. You can keep the arms parallel and wide, you can unite the palms, you can even interlock the fingers and release the index, many ways that you can play with this. Create your own upper body.
tonight. Make sure you're breathing because this is giving you a lot of energy, potentially, as long as you keep breathing to metabolize it. And then the legs slowly start to straighten and the arms softly fall and again we arrive into the, the standing mountain pose. Lots of energy. of our legs from the top. We've done this on the floor. We're going to have the feet about hip distance apart. And as a prerequisite going to the forward fold, we're introducing another very important pose of the standing back bend. So you get the hands to the hips, engaging the legs to support you, and then gently, slowly, bit by bit, pressing the pelvis further and further forward as your chest, throat, and face turn more and more to face the sky. Now, too much. There is such a thing as too much here. We want to keep it feeling good. Stop before too much. If everything's feeling happy, consider delegating more weight and support to the heels. As you sink into the heels more, you can get more of a surge of energy in this. Relax those shoulders. The deep inner tissues are being addressed here. So breathing and really relaxing on those exhales. Try to release that inner tension inside of the chest. Body tremors at all involuntarily. That can be a good indication that it's working. And then leading with the lower abdomen forward, keeping the legs more or less straight as we fall forward into another fold. Only this time, hip distance apart, the feet are placed. So it's a different effect. Let yourself first find the dangle, the lazy dangle. And ask yourself, how do, my, how do the back of my knees feel here? Do they feel overly tugged? Well, let your knees bend just a little bit if that's the case. Or do you want more pull on the backs of the knees to straighten the legs? So it's simple as straightening and bending. Then what do we do with our upper body? You just keep letting the arms dangle. If you like, you can double up on the weight of the arms for each other by taking hands up across opposite shoulders. If you still crave more pull for the back side of your body now, you can hook the big toes. And you're adding a pull. But just like everything else, pull with your heart, not your hands. Good. So you can have a, a, a massage therapist that's very sensitive and tuned to your body. And that's precisely why she or he can press in deep. You get a deep tissue massage. And it can hurt so good. Get that deep tissue massage. So we're ready for that now. We've laid down the groundwork and we can really go as deep as you like. Just make sure it's coming from the heart. <clears throat> now if you happen to have hooked the toes with your fingers, you just want to free up the hands again. Let the left hand slide up the left leg. I like to actually go through that whole motion for thoroughness sake until the hand gets to the surface, that flat surface of your low back. Again, there's that sacrum bone, middle of the pelvis. Your right hand in the meantime goes to the left leg, the ankle, the foot, or maybe even the floor. And then let your shoulders start to stack more and more vertically. You get deeper and deeper into that twist. You can keep that hand right on that low back. In fact, I suggest it, unless you're certain that reaching your arm isn't gonna just be an awkward addition, but an enhancement. Side and out to reach the arm, know that straight up is just one option. It can be overhead, it can be more angled back or more towards the upper corner of the room. Deep breath, keep flowing. Still on that continuum flow. One more big inhale. The movement out of the pose is the other half of the pose. Take your time, don't rush it. Drop back down to the middle. Let's take a nice deep breath together in the middle. Let the exhale be a sigh of relief, release, and let go. And then starting to create the twist on the other side as the right hand slides up the right leg to get some low back. The left hand goes to the right leg, ankle, foot, or floor, just outside the foot. And then it's all yours. The stacking of the shoulders indicates the rotation of the spine and everything around it. If your two arms and the space between your two arms, between the shoulders, is like one hose, one pathway. We want no crimps in the hose. 
usually the crimps up here and back of the shoulder because we're trying to get the arm straight up and then you crimp it right at the back of the shoulder. We want to try to keep that open. Try not to do that. No crimps in the hose. Good. Big inhale. A little extra squeeze perhaps and then ride that sweet exhale out with a sigh of relief. Hanging out in the middle again. Big inhale. With the exhale. Empty out. Next inhale, hands start to slide up the tracks of the legs on the continuum, flow halfway up, exhale, continue the hands to the hips. I always think of a water pump with this next motion, just like a water pump draws water out of the earth. As you come up out of this one, instead of it being water, it's energy that comes up with this pose. Especially to keep that mula bandha, pelvic floor muscles softly engaged. Keep going, turn the gaze up, revisit that standing back bend, hopefully with a smile on the heart. Face. And linger there just as long as you'd like to. There should be a lot of energy in the second round. Good. And then coming back to a neutral stance, let your hands simply drop lazily to your sides. Eyes open or closed and be still for a moment. Perfectly still. So the only movement is your breath. Maybe a little bit of sway. And the vibrations in your tissues. but the legs were together. Now legs apart. It's going to have a different quality, a different personality. <laughs> you sit down into the earth, your legs start to heat up. You feel them flexing. What we want to try not to do is tip forward and compensating for that. You want to keep the spine more tall, the tailbone dropped, so your low back can relax for this one. Your arms stay relaxed, start to let them pour forward. Time we're reaching, reach from the heart, the shoulders relax. So this is a traditional what they call awkward pose, terrible name. We need to come up with another name for this one. Hmm. What do we call it? Awkward pose. Hmm. This is, I don't know, I see like a hy hieroglyphs or something. We call this hieroglyphasana. It's, it's a nice uh, quality to the shape of this one. It's got power, it's got focus. smaller surface area means more pressure, more opening, more flexion. So really wonderful toning of the feet going on right now. Enjoy that. Deep breaths, deep roots. Good. Any wobbling or shaking in the ankles and legs, just let it happen. Let that, that's good alignment that's taking place. And then slowly take the bend out of the knees, drive the feet into the earth even deeper, get even taller. This is the energy of a child attempting flight. Get as close as you can to leaving the ground without jumping. Next thing that happens is just the heels softly returning to the ground. The next thing that happens is just the arms starting to fall. The next thing that happens is the knees starting to bend. And we 
want to make a trip all the way down into your version of squat. And this is one of those poses where our bodies are so different, you got to find your squat. Ideally, though, you want your hips below your knees, which indicates that you're really dropping into it and not using your muscle to support, but it's still bone support. That is opening the backs of your ankles, flushing out the knees, opening up the hips, and decompressing the low back, which is often bearing most of that weight. Now it's a nice moment to decompress that. So a simple squat is actually a very therapeutic pose. Now notice the, what's going on at the base of your pelvis. And we want to softly engage the muscle there. This is called Mula Bandha in the yoga practice. It means root lock. And instead of taking my word for it, what it does and doesn't do, find out for yourself. Engage that pelvic floor muscle. Relax that pelvic floor muscle. Engage. Feel the difference. Mula Bandha, the conscious flexion of that pelvic floor muscle, is a very powerful addition to any pose. So I'll just call that out occasionally, but remember that you can always introduce it. steps back or both feet hop back and we're back in plank, chest activated again, the core, the tummy, letting some energy build here. Now basically this whole time, every single pose we've done, the legs have been mirroring each other. And we're going to start to change that up. So we're going to go through a vinyasa-like motion. You can skip the scoop or dip and scoop for the next exhale. Dropping down, scooping up, inhale. Exhale, over the toes, hands and feet. Inhale, stepping, walking or hopping up to the front, feet side by side. Just like a sun salute, far away up. He comes all the way down, exhale. Keeping those roots in the earth rising up to the sky. And with the exhale, the arms dropping down to unite behind the back this time. In a couple of ways. For most of us, just taking opposite elbows is sufficient and just right. If you want to bring a little bit more openings into the arms, you can bring the palms together behind the back, sliding them up the spine. So you got that prayer hands only behind your heart instead of in front of it. That brings in more openings to the elbows and shoulders, but that can also be too much. So at any time, go back to elbows. Now we're gonna set that left foot back. Here's, here's that deviation in the legs that we haven't explored much yet. So the left foot steps back, but not as big as a trichinosin, just about a foot and a half, maybe two feet between the heels. And as if on a, almost a tightrope, you want the heels, the insides of the feet to be lined up. From there, with the legs engaging, much like we did in standing back then, we want to start off by lengthening up and back briefly. Feeling what that does now, especially on the left side. Big inhale. Now, notice how straight that spine is. Try to keep that straightness as we come forward. That means we're leading with the pelvis, the lower abdomen, and maybe not going down so far. Maybe just coming forward a few degrees. We're paying attention especially to the back of your right leg, and just adding enough massage pressure to delight you. And a few breaths there. You're always open to sinking a little bit further, whether it's a five inches or a millimeter. And just keep on. We've got plenty of time to let this unfold. Good. Remember that a millimeter is as valuable as five inches. <laughs> far you go, but how deep you go. And believe it or not, sometimes pushing harder makes it more superficial. What kind of wiggle room 
room do we have while we're here? Before we go back up, just play around. You're in the same basic pose, same idea that we're staying in here, but you're allowing yourself some wiggle room. Notice how the ways that you can bring in some movement here. Some sway, some tip, some tilt. Maybe favor the right leg, favor the left leg. Play with it a little bit. These poses are so dynamic. Good, nice, nice moves I'm seeing here. Keep it going. You're giving yourself and your body a huge message when you do this exploration. You're giving yourself the authority over the pose, not the pose authority over you. Good. So hopefully every one of us in here able to stay longer because it feels so good, but nonetheless we're going to start the journey back up. Very slow because I want you to sort of study the physics of it. How are your feet relating to the mat? How are your legs relating to one another? Where is the weight? Where is the flexion? Just study it. Go slow. It's fascinating. And as you come back up, water pumps out. We're going to slowly visit that back edge again. And smiles on the hearts. Smiles on the faces even. Makes the whole body more receptive. Good. Coming back to a neutral place. Body should be tingling and ringing and buzzing from all that as we slowly switch out the rolls of the feet. Left foot comes back up next to the right, and the right foot takes its turn back. A few moments to stabilize. That right foot, even slightly angled, helps to keep more of that lateral stability. Strong supportive legs, lengthening up. We're gonna keep that length as you come forward. There's a physical aspect to every pose with the energetic aspects. And we want to try to always be aware of both. It becomes too physical, it eclipses the energetic, the subtle. We always want to keep a sensitivity to both. second time back, way bigger energy, usually. Back to a neutral stance, arms can unbind if they happen to still be bound. Right foot steps up next to the left, and check in again. Eyes open or closed, closed eyes makes for the balancing process to become more obvious. Breaths. Good. We're not waiting for a pose, we're, we're in one already. It's that balancing pose that grows deeper and deeper which we will visit again. Just want to take a moment to feel that. 
before we create our next foundation, our next playground. It starts with a wider stance this time. We're stepping the right foot back to lead the way, but going for a wider step. Then turning to face the right and bringing the two feet to parallel. And there's some wiggle room there too. Traditionally, they say outside edges of the feet parallel, which means the toes are slightly turned in. Well, that's one option. You can be more, heels more in. Insides of the feet more parallel is like the, the, um, the heels more in, outsides of the feet, heels more out, anywhere in between. Find that first, tune into the hips and the legs if it feels at all overextended. Good indication your feet are too wide. Bring them a little closer. Or if you want more, you're not feeling much in those inner hips, let the feet go wider. Now again, just like we were doing a moment ago, just stand, maybe even close your eyes. There's already so much going on. of noticing the things we normally skip past in a hurry. Good. What happens if we bring a back bend into this foundation formation? Bring the hands to the hips. Maybe even engage that Mula Banda pelvic floor muscle again. And offering the pelvis forward. Now this is going to be like the fourth or fifth time we've done this now, but a different formation. Big inhale. Big smiles. And ride the next exhale. Forward. Leading with the lower abdomen. Not even halfway down for most of us. The backs of the legs begin to talk. And keep going as you please to drop eventually into a dangle like our last forward fold when the feet were hip distance apart only now. Because the feet are wide, it gives us the opportunity to address the more of the inner strands of that leg. Somewhere between a split and a forward fold. Meanwhile, lazy style, dangling, opposite elbows, hands resting, and just let gravity do it. And it's just a process of sighing on the exhale and letting go of whatever's surfacing. Or if you want to bring a little more oomph into it, you can bring the hands to the mat and use that grip to squeeze into it a little deeper. Or hook those big toes again, elbows away from each other drawing in. Engage the core. There's many ways that you can activate this. Flexing the legs. You can even activate the inner legs by squeezing them towards one another, of course, without them moving. Like you're grabbing the earth between your legs. On the outside, it looks like we're all in the same pose, but on the inside, we can all be having wildly different experiences. Now, something we haven't done yet today, which I'm really looking forward to, is swaying over to that right leg, whilst keeping the hips as best you can right where they are. Because when you go to that right leg, naturally your whole left leg wants to follow your left hip, but if we keep it where it is and just travel to that right leg, you really optimize the spaciousness of that lower left side of your back. And that's a beautiful sensation. Furthermore, if you inhale deeply, and quite literally expanding the lungs, you get even more massage into that. If bending one or both knees Either one helps to get in there a little deeper. That's okay. No stretch should ever be at the expense of any part of the body. Now enjoy the space between the two sides. Again, the continuum. Good. Beautiful transitions. Left leg leaving the right hip behind. Now, in terms of the rate of posture today, we're getting less pose per minute. <laughs> PPM. <laughs> Hopefully, you feel the quality over quantity. After the next big inhale, 
It's just a surrendering of the gravity back to the middle. You'll naturally arrive in the center. Let's create a new foundation now. So we're keeping the legs as where they are, but adding the addition of the support of the left hand. So we just kind of walk the hands forward first. It's kind of like an oblong, strangely shaped downward dog. But then we just give it all to the left hand. And so we've got a triangle base now, a tripod base. We float that right hand to the low back. Remember those twists we did earlier when the feet were hip distance apart? This is a wide stance version now. And not, not only that, but we can use the left hand against the earth to actually press. So you're not just reaching the right arm or placing it on the low back, but you're actually actively driving left arm down. And that gives us a wonderful way to get into the spine. So some weight is given to that arm, but the right, the, both legs are still doing their fair share as well. And you can change it. I'm noticing some of you doing that intuitively. You can give more to the legs or more to the arms, and that too changes where the twist is going. One more big inhale. And continue on. Flow, smooth, switch. Continuity, benchmark of bliss, sustained bliss. Change, big time. And 
as we did on the other side, just allow a few breaths up top to let the, the message register a little bit. What's going on in that left hip already? Good. And when you feel ready and if you desire, take it to the left this time. off as a mental image, then there's the process of that becoming an organic experience. That's what we're doing right now. So by the time we're leaving the pose, it feels more like you. It feels more natural. Less contrived, less imposed. Every time I say it's time to change, I want you to not want to leave the pose. Now let's slowly come back up to the middle. What else can we do from here? Bring your feet back to the parallel original starting position. Maybe let yourself dance and play a little bit here. Refresh, reboot. So we've done wide stance, triangle stance, parallel feet. Triangle stance, Trikonasana style. Feet doing different styles. Now if we do start the same way, point that right foot to the back wall, but then introduce the knee bend. It starts off the same idea, same hip area, but the knee bend does something different. See if you can feel what that introduces. Not only a change in what's going on here, but also a freedom to widen the stance, perhaps. So because of that knee bend, in some cases, you can increase the distance between the two feet. And from there, from the center of your heart, reach through the arms. shapes and orientations that's really makes me happy start to topple towards the ear more and more as a way of getting into the back of that armpit area. It feels so good. Palm up, palm down, try them both out. And you can also bind this one, if you like, by taking the right arm inside the right leg and the left arm around your back. One hand take his, takes the opposite wrist or hand. Asanaize it from there too if you happen to be bound. And then if you move towards the straighter leg again, the straightening of that leg increases the pull on the left side, and it's just a wonderful effect with that. So just options. Don't force your body into it. Just options. And when you're ready, unbind. Slow motion, rise up. Right leg straightens again. Right foot comes back to its original place. Left foot rotates out. Left knee bends. Widen the stance as you wish. And grow your warrior reach. It doesn't have to be the same as last time. It could be a different inspiration on this side. There's a 
goal in these poses is to get to where the pose is giving you chills. It feels so good. It inspires you. Trikonasana eyes it, aka drop to that hand, elbow, or knee. Right arm shines to the sky and then topples overhead. Feel free to bind if you like. Left arm would go inside the left leg and right arm around the back if you choose to bind. It's kind of a funny rotation it asks of your shoulder when you do that binding. You gotta allow that left shoulder to really rotate and not overkill either, just gentle. If you're bound, feel free to straighten that leg a little bit more and add more squeeze to it. to express inner to outer. So we really want to feel that it is, it, it is very much about shining. Shining what we normally keep inside. Let it out. Radiate, emanate. The way we are taught about everything makes us feel like everything is separate, including ourselves. And that's actually not okay to feel that way. If you feel separate from the world around us, you can feel isolated. You can feel like deprivation. So this pose is really the reversal of that. Just really allow yourself to reach out, dissolve that hard boundary. Nothing can survive in a vacuum. We need the air. We need the sunshine. We need each other. The star pose is a truly wonderful statement. Keeping that radiance of reach, we're going to go one big, beautiful, meaningful sweep of the arms, the hands first down to the earth, and downward becomes forward. Forward becomes upward. Again, really from the heart, we're doing this motion. Upward becomes backward. So when you're moving along that back edge, it's really driving the point home now. Really just shedding all the layers that might remain of tension in the body. Exhaling as the hands interlock. Inhaling as we open the heart wide. And exhaling to fall one more time into a fold over straight legs, or if by now you prefer to let the knees bend a little bit, either is beautiful. This really has a feeling of bringing it home. Good. Anytime you want to let your hands separate, just let them separate and drop. Journey towards the front of the mat, swaying to the left, planting the hands, floating the left foot back next to the right, creating our last plank. Wanted to go into some more balance, but since time's a little quick, we're gonna just dip and scoop or skip that into a child's pose or downward dog. And bring it into the hips like we tend to do. Wrapping up so from downward dog or from hands and knees, take a moment to let your left foot leave the ground. Tripod base, right leg, two hands, and let that left leg float up to the sky. First as a bent leg really allows us to focus more on the hip. And then from there, feel free to reach with that same enthusiasm you've been cultivating all day. Reaching from the heart, from the belly. And then 
sliding that knee forward onto the shin or the side of the leg, moving into vision pose carefully and slowly and with attention to detail can really enhance the quality and effect of the pose. So we first, while we're supported with the hands, it allows us to orient that left leg how we want it. So the angle of that leg, the knee, and how bent or or unbent that leg is determines the angle of approach. Then we set our weight down. Take a moment to inhale, lengthen up, kind of like an upward dog. And with the exhale, gently and sweetly laying the upper body down on top of that left leg, elbows, forehead. Gravity takes over. There's just something about the hips. When the hips are tight, when the, that whole area is balled up and tense, it's really hard to relax. So conversely, as you open up the hips, you really relax at the foundations of the body. It helps us really relax on all levels. So the hips are a wonderful way to help ease up that inner tension. As always, feel free to explore in the silence. of our bodies allows us to feel and sense 
receive on that level. What is feeling anyway? Just pause a moment and not take it for granted, but really think about it. It's just fascinating. How many megapixels make up a sensation? Can thoughts be felt? balancing, wrap it up kind of pose. That's why I love ending on this one. So we'll take a few moments, just soles of the feet together and then some of the adjustments that you can make here. The most basic of which is how close or far do you sit for those heels? That has a lot of say in the effect of this pose. Typically, the closer you sit to the heels, the more it goes into the inner hips. So when we say hips or, or hip opener, we're always kind of talking about the outer side. but that hip has a full circumference, and this is that inner circumference of the hip joints. That's on the physical level. Now it's on that personal inward journey level, just whatever you see in the, in the mirror that is your body. So if you feel like you want to topple forward a little bit to peer in deeper into that mirror, or you want to stay right where you are, or you want to lean back, or if you're toppling forward, do you want a straight spine or do you want to round into it? So many ways that you can go with this one. Again, take your own customized journey. a thousand times, it can always be new, because every moment is new. Let 
Let your breath be still deep and present and totally relaxed. More than ever, that sigh-like exhale. <sighs> Allowing us to let go of any remnants, tension in the body. started off as a flexion. Most ch kids' bodies, for example, are not tense yet. They haven't learned how to ball up, tense up. Our bodies have long since done that. But it can be undone. That tension can be undone. It's not a process of stretching as much of as releasing, letting go of that contraction. But first, you have to detect that contraction. So what, right, while we're just hanging out here on our backs, we're just allowing ourselves to just feel whatever tensions might be there, but without hurrying the process, just deep breathing, you may suddenly feel like you can just relax even more. And that's what we're on the lookout for. We're not trying to force it. We're just allowing ourselves to notice when tension starts to feel like flexion, then we can release it. It's kind of like you can't ungrip your hand until you realize that you're gripping your hand. Once you know that you're clenching your fist, you can unclench, but you have to notice the clench first. That's what's going on right now here. That the side exhale facilitates that, expedites that process. sense may tell us, well, if we're going to start to draw our legs back together, we're going to undo that, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can draw your knees and legs slowly back together without reintroducing tension. And I want you to go slow as you can, really see to it. Quality control. Slow motion allows quality control. As you draw your legs back together, keep them relaxed. Something very interesting tends to happen in that journey. Your legs can be very well, start to tremor and shake involuntarily. And that's a beautiful thing. You just let that happen. Let the, the rumbles happen. It's a kind of release. And inevitably, we're all at a different pace there. And so whenever your knees come together, and there's no hurry, just give yourself one last hug of legs. Wrap your arms around those legs. If you're still drawing your knees together, don't rush that process. If you're getting a lot of shapes, to take time. If you're hugging your legs, really squeeze. And then blossom open into whatever version of twist you like, whether it's both legs to one side, or one leg over the other, or one leg wraps around the other. However you do it, a very natural twist that feels good to you. Uh, finishing, closing statement. To the other side, only when you feel ready and satisfied. That side. And we're just going to run a couple minutes past that. That 12, 30 mark. Just want to get a, a brief shavasana in. So if you don't have to rush off after your final twist, you're going to come back to the middle and either just sprawl right out onto your back in Shavasana or another hug if you like to balance out the sides after the twist. If we just went right into Shavasana, it wouldn't be the same as it is now. Because we did all of that deep tissue work and really getting down in the nervous system and deep tissues, Shavasana now is so much more potent and therapeutic than if we went right to lying down. So keep that in mind. We're gonna just take a minute or so in Shavasana, but it's no normal minute. It's no ordinary minute. It's an infinite minute.
into your body for the first time. Very, very delicate movements at first. Slightly deeper breath, maybe a little bit of wiggling of the fingers and toes. Kind of re-entering very consciously back to body. Again, it doesn't have to be at the sacrifice of our deep sense of relaxation. So the task at hand for all of us, myself included, is to make it back to the car and beyond. Staying relaxed. It starts now. So as you draw yourself back up to seated position, don't yank yourself back. Just kind of slowly merge back to our original starting place. Refresh, renewed, relax. and yet lighter than before. And I hope that serves you well until two weeks from now. I'm going to be back. I'm gone next week. See you in two weeks. Namaste. Yeah.